Hello friends, it's me, Cynthia, and Azalea is off screen. Hello! And uh, we're Green Girl Studios, and today I'm going to show you some of my new designs. I have two new coins that I wanted to show you. Uh, I traveled to Florida not long ago, probably a month or so ago. How long ago was that? Actually, it's a few, yeah, yes, when we were in Florida. It was, a, it was in January, so that was uh, a few months ago. And from, when I was there, I had some pretty fun experiences spotting gators and armadillos. I hadn't seen a, a live armadillo in some years, so it was pretty exciting. I mean, I guess if you think of it as, as being, if looking at uh, armadillos as exciting, it generally isn't considered a thrilling experience. But for me, I got up close. We were on this path at the bird sanctuary is that where would you say that is where we went cape canaveral was it in cape canaveral i'm uh, pretty sure there's a drive a bird drive where you can drive through the, this whole swampy area there's tons and tons of birds and it's pretty magical it's really quiet and you can see things like roseate spoonbills which you never i mean i never see them whenever i'm home and just a lot of, it's like a really primeval kind of landscape. Like last time we were walking around and we saw wild hogs running around. You I was saw like, eight gators. Eight gators. Wild that, pigs, wild hogs. Yeah, the armadillo was so cute. It was like this big. It was so adorable. He was around. And I made this coin. Let me see. Let's see. Oh, hello, June. Our friend June is on. So I don't know if you can kind of see that. I'll, I'm going to turn the camera around so you can actually see it. But there's a little, I carved a little armadillo. And man, I kind of wanted to pick it up. It was making this little piggy snort sound. It was so cute. It's, uh, it's not the kind, you know, I thought all of the armadillos could be perfectly into a ball. But I think that's a misconception. I don't think they can go completely spherical I think they can kind of tuck up but I think then there's a one in Texas that goes into a perfectly content like contained little ball this will I think I think the ones in Florida are cuter though they have kind of a pinkish look to them and the weird thing was that I looked up facts about armadillos after I'd seen the one and they it was their, their outer carapace, or whatever you call that exoskeleton, has uh, it, it has skin on it. And it's like skin temperature when you touch it. So I think if I touched it, I would have probably screamed. <laughs> because of the tactile difference of that uh, creature. Like, I don't know, I guess if you touch like an, like uh, reptiles, they, they kind of feel room temperature, kind of, I guess. I don't know. Not that I felt a lot of creatures hello robin wendy bonnie hello friends deborah it's good to see you on here oh you know what this is not a real piece of coral it's glass actually there's a glass artist i can't think their name it's a pretty cool sculpture i'm really surprised it's held up all these years and hasn't hasn't had anything break off of it especially with how crappily I put that thing on there it's hanging from uh, a piece of leather so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I've been working on huh. back lens they have so many little it's a studio there's Azalea working hard. Turn around and say hello, little daughter. Hi. Hello. Here's another one. Restocking the store. Yay. So we're doing a sale in our store. Well, we will in a second. If you go look now, I haven't put the discount out yet, but I'm still logging the coins. Mm. So I made, If I had a couple of messages where people were asking me when I was going to restock the shop. For coins and I haven't done it in a minute so I made a big batch the other day and 
Oh, so here we go. Oh, hello, Karen. Hello, Allison. Thank you all for joining me today. This is the armadillo. It's like, I wish I could make this a little... I keep trying to make it larger on my screen. But it always seems hard to do to get that to go in focus. I need to put my optimizer so I can see if I'm in focus. So that's the armadillo. That's so cute. It was on the side of the road. And I spotted it because I saw this huge alligator across. There was like this, uh, not a ditch, but I guess the road we were on, on both sides, there was water on both sides. So it was kind of, kind of had like you were on a little path. And on one side, we saw this really huge alligator. So we pulled over to get a good look at it. And when I was pulled over, we saw the little, little armadillo. And it was just rooting around looking for things. And the gators, they didn't even notice that we were there. They just stayed on the side, like passed out. It was pretty cute. So since I said that, now I'm going to get a ton more videos on alligators on my Instagram and Facebook. Which I don't mind. Oh, this is one that I haven't stocked in the shop in a while. So if you've been waiting for one of these, like I had to repair the mold. There was a crack on one side. So I had to repair it and it came out like you can't even see where, well, you wouldn't see it on this, but it broke. So I repaired it and now it's whole again. And if you've been waiting on this coin, I put, I don't know, two or three, maybe. I didn't make a ton because you know what? I have a lot of designs and sometimes you don't know what people are going to want. Although usually I, mermaids are a pretty good, a pretty good bet. These are two that I just restocked. This one has a nice, like, classic sort of mermaid shape. This one has octopi around the edge. I don't know if you've seen this one before. It's pretty detailed. It's one of the most detailed ones. And since these are right out of the tumbler, they're really kind of hard to see the details. So sometimes what I like to do is hit them with a pro polishing pad to raise the details. That's these. These have, like, a little bit of some kind of aggregate. They're soft, but it feels like foam. It's a polishing compound probably in there. We restocked some bees. People always love the bees. You know, when I was at the retreat, I met a gal that her hobby was tagging bees. I wanted to go with them to do it because she was gonna, I guess that's what she does in her spare time is run, she runs around looking for bumblebees. And this is a bumblebee because of its thick body and if you could see, I mean, it has a little bit of a stripe, so they have a fuzzy body there. Carpenter bees, I didn't know this, they're fuzzy on the top. I didn't know that. And you know what I'm going to share with you guys? I'm going to show you some stretches that I learned at the retreat. There was a physical therapist that showed up. She's like, I know all y'all crafters don't like to get up from your crafting station. I was like, isn't that the truth? And so she gave us some stretches some really easy ones that you could do so that you don't injure yourself with your crafting. Like my mom did. She gave herself carpal tunnel from crocheting so hard. Oh, and I haven't had these in a minute. You know what? I feel like I haven't stocked my coins since January. That's how long I did a restock. You know, they take a while to make. That's the thing about making these is that they're kind of labor intensive. I've got to go press them out and go around the edge. And then if they don't fire well, sometimes they don't fire well. That's a little ske like a skeleton. This was based on a design I saw in France. Reminds me of those tunnels or catacombs. I thought I would love it. Turns out I did not love it. It made me really sad. There were the famous catacombs in Paris. It was like 10 million steps underground. That part was also not awesome. I was like, turns out I don't like enclosed spaces. Yeah, isn't that cool? You just wipe it. Sometimes they get too shiny and you can't see the details. This is one, a recent one. I made this one pretty recently. It has a little face in the flowers, a little rain frog, a salamander. And if you can see it, there's also a little bee and a snail. It's like a 
looking at these, I have so much detail on it. It's one of the reasons it's a little bit different. Pressing these coins, you can see the fingerprints on the back. It's a little bit different than the process of using an injection mold, which is something that you would use for things like this. This is so this is injection molded. The 3D things. You have a mold that can like you have it where you kind of use the hot wax to fill the mold. This is one of my very first bronzes. I found this in my collection the other day. And I think we'll remold this. It's called Frankie Pony. I used to be obsessed with the idea of having a miniature horse. And that's what this, that's, this was the name of the horse when I lived in Toledo, Ohio. That was the meanest little pony you ever heard of. If you went near his paddock, he would rush you. He's a very furious little horse. And he was always trying to bite me. I, I would walk by, because he was on my route to go home, and he would snap at me, even though I was bringing him apples and carrots and things. Little brat. Oh, you're waiting for a unicorn. Wendy, um, she's waiting for a unicorn. Check That's email. Yeah, check your email. That's what his eye says. You might have gotten one of my silver ones that I've unicorn made recently. Oh, goody. Oh, sorry, Wendy. That was one of the lost ones. So we are currently recasting it. So if you haven't heard, I try not to think about it because it makes me feel like I'm going crazy. I don't think we are recasting it. So anyway, we had some stuff, packages go missing and lost. lost. Stolen. Stolen. I hate thinking about it. So we have been reimbursing or doing credit or casting. So... It was fairly traumatizing, so I didn't want to talk about it that much, but it's something we're dealing with, and we're almost over it, you know, when you've almost caught up. We're going through the castings right now. Oh, so this is another one. This is from a, this, maybe two summers ago I made this. It's a little witch. She has a little fox friend, and there's a little town or a little house Oh, I wanted to show one of the quick ways that I was going to show that I like to make earrings with these. It's like the fastest thing in the whole world. The sale is live, by the way. 15% off all the bronze coins. Robin, I can make another Fiona. I can do that for sure. The Fiona is going to get Did you yeah, why wouldn't they be remade? They would the fifteen percent off discount on the website until I think I set it at Monday. Sunday or Monday, it closes off, but it's 15% off all the bronze coins. So listen, I never do a discount on that, ever, because these take me forever to make. But I'm trying to recoup my losses on having a bunch of packages stolen. So that's why we're doing the sale. So if you've been eyeballing anything, I never do a sale on those coins. I don't even do a sale for Christmas, just because, I, you know, it takes me forever to make a batch. So that's a, you know... That's something. Oh, this is another new one. I just made this, but this was over the summer. Last summer I made this. It has a little owl. And you've probably seen these from Lima Beads because they order this one. And so then I don't usually make it because I've made like 10 million of them for Lima Beads. This one has a little beetle and a turtle. I saw this turtle, by the way, walking around. I did not see an owl talking to him. The owl I saw the other day that lives in this forest that I visit. Because I think it wasn't even a screech owl, but that is similar. Oh, and I have another Bob. And Azalea's got... Where's the Bobby Yaga that I can show? Somebody else was asking me about that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Azalea's got a Yes, of course. I haven't stopped it yet. Oh, well, you know what? I have a, a pouch in my purse that I grabbed a bunch of them. Maybe you can get it, Azalea, and look, because I grabbed a whole handful Where? in my purse so that I could take them with me and take pictures. Here's a Bobby Just take this one. I'm still stocking. Yeah, so there's at least maybe two. Oh, hello, Sheree. Here's a Baba Yaga. The Baba Yaga hut. Yeah, if you look close, you can almost see Vasilisa the Beauty in there. Or maybe it's Vasilisa the Brave. I can never remember the how which one it is.
Oh, do you want to see? I made this for Azalea a long time ago, and she was little. This was a type of uh, a little place that I made for her. Isn't this cute? I came across this when I was organizing. It sits up like this. So it makes like a little world. And there's some of the ones I painted. When did I paint this? Let's see if I wrote it in there. Is it for Azalea? Oh, I did sign it. Can't read my own writing. 09 or 08? And here's another one. Isn't that cute? She's got a... She's got... This one has a baby. Cute. Yeah, I made these. I painted... This reminded me of something Candy was showing the other day. She had those little... Those little bunnies in wood. And, um... She put that... Those napkins with decoupage techniques. That's what this reminded me of. I was like, hey, wait a minute. I have some of those somewhere. So Candy has that. Candy Cooper has a cute video where she uses these little wooden things to, but it has bunny ears. I don't know if she added those. I didn't see that part. But if you want to see how she did it, I think it was on Easter. So you can check that out. But you just paint the inside of a cigar box if you wanted to do this. I painted it first with gesso and then the gesso made it so that it really held and made a nice surface for the acrylic. So if you want to do a simple version, Candy has some good directions. You can do it way faster because she uses these really decorative uh, tissue napkins and decoupage. So, and that's what's in this. She ha Azalea has all these little boxes. Of, one of them was her movable feast, like that Babette's feast, that movie from the 80s. Such a good movie. Oh, so, okay, I'm going to show how to make these really fast earrings. I want a round one, though. Let's see, maybe I'll find one. Hmm, I'm going to put some beads with this. I'll choose... You know what, I choose these every time and I keep choosing them. It's like my pattern, you know? Like, oh... I've only used these 10 million times because I love them. Oh, thanks, Kim. She says that box of cuteness is an heirloom. Might be faster to do these. A little bit bigger. Pour some of those. These are those vintage... Uh, I got these from that Sandy Shore guy a while ago. This is some nice soft lux. I'd been hanging on to this. It's the 24K fancy one. Look how shiny and fancy that is. I saved that because it was kind of, I was like, oh, look, highfalutin soft lux. So I'm going to make the fastest earring in the whole world. Actually, it's not that. Actually, I take that back. This is not that fast because I have to string these beads. It's only, it's um, a little bit faster than some of the other things that you can do for, like if you're doing seed beads, these are pretty fast. Okay, so these are kind of opalized. I love them. And I'm going to put these. <clears throat> I don't know, I'm never that fast with stringing these. I should have done this earlier. I always say that. Oh, hello, Kalite. She says, happy, wonderful Wednesday. Thank you. I strung on this piece of medium soft flux. You can use any color. And I'm going to try and get, I put a crimp down at the bottom. And I'm going to make a little frame. Now, the fun part of this is that if I had... Let me see. Maybe I can do that. I have. A, I might have a briolette sitting over there. Is that a briolette? Oh, maybe so. Maybe so. Like, is there a random briolette I can use? So, what I'm going to do is make a frame. Let's find one of these. This one might be good. And I'll measure it out. So you can see where I'm going with this. 
I want about that much. I think that'll look good. Now I'm using one color. Obviously you can use whatever color. You don't even have to use seed beads. You could go in and use some really fancy... Actually, I might do that. Had I not started this, I think I would like to do those really cool sapphires. That would be really good. But these had such a big hole. I thought I'd get it done a little quicker. So anyway, we have a nice sale going on on our website. Azalea, you can probably drop that in there on our coins. You can search them. I'm doing a discount, which I never do. So that's a good time. If you've been waiting and if you sent me a message about, I think there's two Baba Yagas so far. I know there's always people asking me about that one. I should get on it. But I was telling my friend Joanne, I was like, you know, after 2020, I kind of just, I stopped being so concerned when you learn to live with a lot less, like you're so many distractions, like, and you're comfortable like in your own studio. And then the things that you long for are real com communication and interaction with people. Then other things that I used to do, like going to, I don't know, like trivia nights and stuff like that, where you're at a bar and it's not, and it's loud. It's not the same. I mean, it, it's, it's, the interaction is cool, but I feel like the, the kind of, the kind of communication you get like at a retreat or at a yarn meetup or you know some kind of gathering like that it's a lot more real or authentic i guess is a better way to put it all right let's see how that looks i think those look pretty i love them they're they're old these would not be very good for something that you need to have consistency like a brick stitch or something, because they're all different. What's good about this type of things, and I made necklaces many times before with this, and one of the things I like to do is string a bunch of these and randomly have like pearls or something placed, and then have like a crimp or a tube bead that has some play. So then you can go in after you have a base layer, say you have like 10, 12 inches, actually you need more like 18 for a regular actually maybe more like 24 I don't know why I said 10 but because I like my necklaces long if you leave if you have some big tube beads you can then go in and add more layers to make kind of like a, like a mermaid necklace and if you use pearls like seed pearls that look like uh, you know seed beads that are colored pearls they look very mermaid jewel like yeah these are so fast you're not even gonna believe it oh wait i want to see if that if i um okay i'm checking if i like that could be a little bit longer but i'm too late to add a briolette because you could do it and i've done this before is chain or briolette at the bottom. Isn't that cute? I could have done that, but I didn't string that on. So you have that option. You could put all kinds of beads in there. One of my favorites is to do little CZs all the way out, kind of like a pennant. And that's really pretty. I'm gonna put that through here. Oh, what happened? Just blocked. Is somebody being on there? No, I haven't done Prairie Dogs. There's no discount code, Teresa. Yeah, it should just be discounted naturally. Yeah, it's already. We have some trolls. Oh. Where are they? Maybe someone already got rid of it. Do you see it, Azalea? I'm not on there. Oh. Oh, I see it. Let me get rid of it. There we go. And then, yeah, I didn't see that. Thank you guys for alerting me. 
I'm going through the last. It's like basically making a tiny necklace. Okay, there's no play on that. It's right up against it. Now, you can tuck in. I'm holding on to it, but if I let it go, I tightened that, and I'm afraid to let it go because I, I was too hasty. But you can tuck in easily. Trim it. And that little head, that little um, pin here, let's see, I've made it into an oval shape. Now, sometimes I've done this where I'll do several layers hooked onto that. I'm going to find a, a earring wire now. You know, these lights, I was cold earlier because it's about 50 here in Asheville, but these lights make me so hot. So now I don't see my earring wires. They were sitting here, of course. You know, do you ever do that thing where you put things away so that you can find them in the future and then you actually make it so that you can actually find it because you put it away so well? So that's what I did. I put away my earring wires. I have a whole box of them that I took out. So picture an earring wire at the top. Under my bowl? Probably. Not under my bowl. I had a bag. I took them out in preparation. But now it's like it's invisible. So you'll have to picture that hanging out up there. So one of the things you can do, if you don't like this being like free, what's easy about this is that you can wire wrap that closed very simply. Or it can be tucked in behind, just like that. And that looks pretty cool, too. And if you do some that have little little stones on the outside, it can be really, really delicate and pretty. So that's one of the things. That's actually a good pendant right there, just like that. See what it looks like with a chain. I have a friend. You guys might remember Scattered Light from the 90s at Bead and Button. They made all that fine jewelry. She made things called collage pendants. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but they were stacked up, kind of like this, but the bale was big, a big wire-wrapped bale that she forged. And she would stack all these things together. And I have a pretty good collection of them. I'm gonna get them out and show you sometime, because I loved them, I loved them, I loved them. Let me see, I bet I could show one of the ways to do that. Hmm. I was going to show it that way, but I couldn't find it. Dang. If you can picture it, the other wire would have been on the back, so they'd stack up, and you'd get a pendant that was multi-layers. It'd be like this thick. And you'd have several of them in there. Which was uh, it's a, like a collage necklace. So this one, let's see how that would look. So if I was doing this for the market, I would wire wrap this so that it was flush to the back with a little piece of wire. Maybe a head pin to make it a little bit faster. Oh yeah, graduated stones? Yeah, that'd be killer. Well, it's almost see-through. I don't know if I love that. That chain is so fine. Seemed like it would be better with a different thickness of a chain. And, yeah, if you had a graduated stone type piece, the, that would be pretty expensive um, necklace, I think. Maybe have, like, your graduated ones spaced, interspaced throughout, like... Hmm... I'm going to see what I have over here. Do I have a kit sitting out? Maybe I have a kit sitting out. I can show that. It's a good idea. I have this kit. Let's pour this out. I found this one. I don't know what this one is, but 
Let's go in there and look around. Root around in there. Ah, you know what would be good? Oh, yeah. Something like... I think maybe the other day when I was making different pendants, I feel like... That's when I worked on before, but it's kind of the same idea, you know, where you're adding different things. In this case, we're making a, a frame around it. And I think it would be cool to do something where you have several pieces. Maybe even, that's too big. Yeah. Oh, look how pretty this would be to make it a round. Oh yeah, this is some crystals that came in that. It's like a summer kit. Do you know what the name of this kit is, Azalea? And if there's any on the shop? Which one is it? It's green, mostly green. Um, oh yeah, those are pretty in there. That must be, that's an old. Yeah, this is an old one. Because it has a mix of those pond water. I love those that it's called. It's not called pond water. I just called it pond water. It has nothing to do with that. I just call it that because it reminds me of of when if you've ever had a frozen piece of ice from a pond. There's like little pieces of algae. It's like a whole little universe in a piece. I wonder what kind of that looks like crystal. But anyway. It would be easy enough. There's a lot of possibility. I think this green would look good, maybe like this, to make that frame. You see, there's a lot of potential. But it's good if you can use inexpensive stones for the bulk of your frame and then maybe have like something pricier at the bottom or more sporadically placed. So you can kind of keep the cost down in your designs if that's, you know, obviously you don't have to do that. Well, it just depends on who you're making it for. When I say it's too expensive, you might, if you're making it for um, a show that's like a craft show, then you would have a harder time selling it. But if it's something like the Southern Highland Guild, that's, that's, people don't even, they just buy. They're not even looking at the price. So it's a different market. So if those were all sapphires, maybe if your piece had silver, you could get a lot more for it. That's the thing about pricing jewelry. It's always so difficult because you have to factor in materials and your time. And there's that whole thing with perceived value, you know? It's like, it's like anything. Why, what gives things its value? Is it the rarity? Is it really because it's super precious? I don't know. I see some of these fashion designers and I get kind of disgusted from what I'm seeing because I'm like, why is that, you know, $1,200 for a sweatshirt that has oh a God, cat on it? makes me so angry. Yeah, for sure. So we are at... Oh, good Lord, and to find that place. <laughs> same. Same. Speaks to people. Yeah, it's, it is hard. Pricing is very difficult. I think I'll, I need to do a, a segment on how to price things and have a formula. Because I do have a formula. You have to have one if you sell jewelry. Otherwise, you run the risk of not making any money. And then you're kind of... You know, you'll be out on, out of the business without even trying. So just so y'all know, the coins are 15, is it 15% off? Yeah. 15% off. Last time I did a sale was on my pewter. There's no discount code. There's no discount code. On the website. That's, yeah, no discount code. We had so many problems with discount codes. Because it's, um, I don't know if it's my site or if people are trying to do, we had folks trying to retroactively use a coupon code, which is super confusing. Super confusing. So that's one of the reasons why coupon codes on our website are difficult. So it works a little easier just to have it on the actual things that are on sale. Oh, this is one that I've had that I use as an example. I make necklaces like this at, I have a show coming up in, is it July, the beginning? Isn't it usually June or July? We have the Big Crafty. 
And I make these necklaces on chain and I sell them anywhere between 40 and 50 for a coin and a chain. Maybe I'll do like a crystal. It depends. Yeah, co the coins are mostly so. Oh, they're. Um, we were just stocking them, Allison. Stocking them now. Azalea's stocking refresh. them. You just have to hit refresh. Yeah, they're coming in hot. More more. <laughs> Azalea's been. Minutes, she's. More. She has a huge stack here that I've been working on, so it's pretty good. Yeah, if you're just joining us, we have a sale going on right now on our coins on the website. When would you see the dates? Oh, for the Big Crafty. Go to the Big Crafty uh, website. That has everything, the, the vendors. You can look at old pictures on the Facebook or on their Instagram. You look for the Big Crafty. It's all one word. And if you would like, I think Azalea, she's too busy right now. To, I was going to ask her to drop that link in there for you. But it's pretty easy to find Big Crafty. Oh, yeah. Sometimes breaking even with your jewelry. Sometimes you have to, you know, because if it's pricey, that's uh, that's the hard part. Sometimes it won't sell, you know, but then sometimes it will. So you don't know. You never know. I've held on to some pieces. And then if it's time, like I have one necklace that I made with sapphires and this uh really beautiful gold wire that i'd been saving and it was expensive the wire was gold it wasn't gold filled it was actual gold and it was a very dainty wire work necklace kind of like y'all know how i like to do the dainty wire work here's some of that right here this looks like azalea is this your work or is this my work that's mine. That's Azalea's work. So she has a similar method, partly because I taught her. I don't think she finished this. This is not finished. You were going to no. dingle dangle stuff at the bottom right here. I never finished it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So this is a uh, silver wire that she did and attached this on a... I think it's the same one. Oh, no, it's not. So I think she was going to do this action, if you can just picture it. This gauge of wire, it looks like, to me, I would say that's 24. Let's take a look. 26. Is that the same? No. So this is 24. And the reason she's using that is some of these beads have very small holes. A lot of times, opals will have very itty-bitty tiny holes. And I hate that story. But... They're nice. They're, they're nice, but sometimes holes. you got small holes. Yeah, I like a thicker. I like a I like to be able to get in there. All right. So our sale today, most of it consists of the coins. So if you want, we have all these guys going. They're going into the store right now. Zoe is putting that. I think what we'll do too is add some more of the kits because I have a couple kits sitting here and I think sometimes I'll keep a couple to have to make things with but oh look at this here's one of the coins painted with vintage patina paint this is the dodo I like it with the paint but you know what I think I'd like it even more I'm going to show you what it looks like when you you take that patina paint it already has that finish but I'm going to go over it again and make it look kind of like weathered I don't know if I like it more. Do I? Maybe. Yeah, I love the dainty look too, Vicky. It's it's uh it's pretty and ethereal, that's the word I'm looking for. So right now we're working on a new batch of silver. We're working on replacing some of the stuff that was lost. And that will come this Sunday. I'm working on the waxes tonight. It takes a few days to make a batch. So I got to start. I've already started. So that's on the coming soon. This Sunday. I'm making more sterling items. 
I thought maybe clasps because there's always people always love a clasp and less of the big stuff, you know. But we'll see. We'll see. I haven't made these in silver, but I don't know. That's kind of heavy. Some some things are too heavy, I think. And it's like a special, like if you're gonna buy it, you know, silver is expensive. Okay. I am ready to show you. I have only a few gemstone lots tonight because I was busy making coins all week. All right, I'm gonna show you what I have. Okay, you ready, little daughter? Um, I only have the, the a few tonight. Bonnie says she'd love some clasps. Oh yeah, you're gonna love this. Some of the, my latest kits that I've been using with my my um, private collection is pretty juicy, very juicy. I'm working on a couple of kits now that I found and I located some amber that I'd been sitting on and I'm getting ready to put it into a kit. It's really extra. And I found some blue amber that I've been waiting for. This, I got this, I have a few. I bought some of this. I wasn't sure if people would like it. This is emerald. It's faceted and this is not dyed. It comes from Brazil. Like I think Colombia, Brazil. I think a lot of, of, I think all emeralds come from that part of the world. Even the purple emerald. So I looked at purple emerald and emerald sapphire and ruby are the same stone. They're in the corundum family. And they are a very hard nine. So these guys, I need to show what it is. So I have these marked at $28. It is $9.81. I have five of them. If you're interested, $9.81. I don't know, Wendy, I'll have to look. Yeah, Wendy, you I sent you emails today. I'll have to look. I don't know. I don't have um I don't know what people got. So I'll have to look at it. Nine eighty one, it's twenty eight dollars. It's a pretty good price for these. These are faceted. You can see that they have a good micro facet on them. And they get they're graduated to pretty small. They're really little, but they have a good color. How many do you have? Five? I have five. Yeah, they're tasty. This would actually be a good if you made a pendant. I would that would feel to me like it was really luxurious if you did that technique with one of these. Fancy. So fancy. Now I learned that earring technique from my friend Emily. You can see she teaches a better version than what I just showed you. Way yeah, better. Well, uh, um, on beadshop.com website, I saw her do that. But she taught it to me probably five or ten years ago when we were hanging out in Montera. We, when, whenever we go, that's a, a friend of ours has a beach house and on in Montera, California, and it's on the cliffs. It's a beautiful place. It's a little writer's workshop. And whenever we go, we bring a ton of stuff. All right, so if you're watching replay, you can message right up here green girl studios at yahoo.com and you can ask me if i have anything left 951 and remember i don't have deep stock on this what i'm doing is i'm buying small amounts of really precious fancy things and breaking them up so that it's accessible to all just like my dreams man when i go over and see bully i'm still waiting for the day when that guy will sell me one of his moon beads. The strand is about $1,500. It's only gone up in price over the years. But for the past, I don't know how many years, I teased this African friend of mine. I'm like, bully, let me have a moon bead. I'll pay for it. Come on. He's like, no way. Apparently he sells them and he says that people buy them from architectural, they get that magazine, Architectural Digest, and they hang them on the wall. He's like, it's art. I'm like, I know it is. This was 982. These are big rainbow tourmalines it's 28 dollars 982 and look there's some indicolite in there how juicy is that these aren't dyed that's natural and i high graded them so that they are all like perfectly like i took out any of the 
Like if there was ones that were broken, you know, that that's what high grading is, is when you put the best of the best together. So that's what high grading. When they say if you get a strand and it's completely high graded, that means you're not dealing with a bunch of... of uh... Don't you have eight of those? Yes, I have eight. I have eight of these. Yeah, these are juicy. Yeah, Indicolite. How often? I was so happy. So I put a little bit on each one. Indicolite is the light blue, light teal color of tourmaline. And you, I have not seen an Indicolite strand in probably 20 years. They just, you just can't get it anymore. You only get like a little piece because it's the most rare part of the tourmaline strand. The most common, of course, is the black, the black tourmaline, which they always, the, the, the adage of that is it keeps the crazy away, but they use tourmaline in different, I believe they use them in circuit boards somehow. So anyway, that's that. I have one more. I know tonight I'm light on the stones just because I'm working so hard on making more. We also had kind of a hard day. Oh yeah, today was a hard day. I don't know why it was so hard, but it was. It took us a long time to get our stuff it was just one of those days, you know? Oh, you ever days? Yeah, you can use your gift card on that. Yes. Oh, so if That's you... That's what the credit is for. Here, let me tell them since I had to do it. So, um, Lauren Rachelson had a really good idea on one of our lives maybe last week or so when some of this stuff was getting kind of real. And since it's kind of difficult for us to just straight up refund everybody, we were hoping... I emailed people, by the way, to give an option whether you can request a refund for your items or preferably I send you a gift card that comes up to the total of the loss of the amount of stuff so if you lost like twenty dollars worth of items I send you a twenty dollar gift card and you can use that anywhere on the website including the invoices from our live sales so yes you can use it on this yes yes indeed all right, so this is fan, uh, faceted pink opal. It's graduated. I have five strands. This is 16. So sometimes I don't love pink opal because, well, one, I got kind of burnt out on it. I bought a lot of it because it I reminded me. One, this one is, is, look, the colors are better on this. Oh, it's showing up very so pale, very but um, it's more of a ballet pink, and they're more too. saturated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. They yeah, they look good. So this is $16, dollars nine eighty. They're really pretty. They are micro faceted, nice size hole, good shine. So it's a good, I feel like it's a good one for summertime, you know. Like it's uh, perfect to do with like beachy kind of, this one would be good too with that. It goes well with like purple colors to me. Like, look at that with purple. Isn't that pretty? Or blue. Blue and this pink is my favorite. Although today I was watching Kate's Live and there was a bracelet with pink and gray and it reminded me of the 80s. And I was like, that's a good idea, pink and gray. I haven't seen that since like, you know, it was used to be pink or no, that's more of a 90s thing. Pink and green is like the 80s. Like, look at this with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's like so like Maybelline, right? Great lash. But I think it would look even better with like this tone of, of green. It's kind of a sea foam. I think that looks good together. And it also brings out the pink. Anyway, that's a good price on that. $16 for faceted pink opal. It usually comes like in little rondelles that are kind of smooth. And you know what they look like? And I think this is what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to make them look like conch pearls or conch pearls. And if you've ever seen a conch pearl, they are extremely rare and extremely expensive. They're actually this color, but they're natural and they form inside of a conch shell. So... The color is basically this. This looks just like conch, con or sometimes they have them in like, like this color here. It's in coral colors, very coral, like that color. You could do that. That's a painted pure piece, but that's one of the colors it comes in, or a slightly grayish green color. But anyway, that's that look, and they are really delightful. So 980. If you're watching on replay, 
go to Green Girl Studios at Yahoo and dot com and shoot me an email, and I'll let you know if we have more available. I think we do, because I think I I kind of got wild with this. You know, sometimes I get stuff, and I had this vision of making necklaces that were done with like. Well, I was going to make mermaid necklaces, and this is like it's summertime. I, that's my favorite type of, uh, you know, necklace type is with mermaid jewelry. It's my hashtag, mermaid jewels, that I like on Instagram. And I fill that up. I bet I have like, if you were to hit that, you'd see my stuff because I'm always using that hashtag. Because I like that look where it kind of looks ethereal, yet sort of like a watery kind of like you pulled it from the sea maybe not so much with the seaweed all right i'm gonna flip this around today was a short live very short i'm gonna flip this one of my things to do is to get a Oh, the thing I just made. The other day, I met a new friend at the retreat, and she came over, and I showed her felting. And this is the hat that I made. But I don't have any of the hat-blocking tools. You know, I think, I think you need this, like, wooden block to steam them. See, I don't know. There's not a lot of... I'm kind of making it up as I go along. But this is a felted hat... And I need to steam it and shape it. It hasn't been steamed or shaped. Look, because you can kind of do. I have to decide what size side I want to use. But this one had a weird area on it that looked like a stain, but it wasn't. Pretty cool, huh? So anyway, let's see. You can see what I mean. How it needs to be steamed into shape. And there's also a thing that gets the brim. You know what's hard to do? is to get the brim exactly equal all the way around without having to use well I'm not sure how they do it I was trying to measure it and it was kind of a nuisance so I could see why people get that tool it's like a it has like a flat thing that traces the, the brim and cuts at the same time so it reminded me of like how a serger is but it's obviously it's not it's just a blade so that was one project I did over the other, like over the last couple of days. I'm going to make a bag and I'm going to show you my bag. After I'm done with all of my, all of the wax work that I have to finish, I'm going to get back on my felting wagon because it's so fun to felt. I don't know if you all know this, but wet felting is a lot of fun. Oh, the kitty peacock. Oh, that's, um... Oh, that's in my one of my newest paper dolls. Isn't that so cute? It's Marty if he was in a form of being a little botanical cat. Look how plush that tail is. It's not adorable. It's my cat. That's what he looks like. And I made a paper doll of Marty. We basically bring it with us and stare at it and talk about it. I don't know how we get anything done. We basically don't. We just look at that cat. All right, folks, I hope you had fun with me tonight when we looked at my new coins, my new alligator and armadillo. Armadillo. I'm I know I'm looking right at it and I'm sitting here going, what is that thing? I'm listing what is it. that? I'm putting, I'm adding stuff to the website, like new listings right now. Oh, so Azalea will be adding more. So if you want to check back in, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, she's making all the new ones because that isn't even on the website. I just finished it like a couple days ago see oh all right we will see y'all on sunday and i will have a fun project picked out it probably won't be felting because i've been felting like a crazy person for the past like three weeks i've been on fire i don't even make anything to sell with felting i just like it so We'll move on from that. Probably just regular jewelry making. I'm thinking I want to show some ways to use graduated. I heard another person ask me how I like to use them. And personally, I spread them out in increments. I don't use them all in one project, generally speaking. Just because it's like, you know, I like them. 
but am I going to make the necklace with all of them in one? Usually I use them where I can kind of get, I can extend that, that, uh, the usage of my piece. Oh, crochet. Karen, crochet. <laughs> ah, how I hate teaching crochet. Um, and I'll tell you the reason I hate it, because I don't hate, hate it, but I'm going to make, I'm making, I don't know why I say I'm going to make, I'm making currently, I have video and some handouts already on how to do the crochet, but that's a lengthy process because it's hard to teach tension without having like diagrams and basically holding somebody's hand if they've never crocheted. It's really difficult to teach tension. My mom taught me by using a great long knitting needle and she'd sit across from me and she'd tap my knuckles with it and say, control. And I was like, control what? The thread. That's what she'd say. Control the thread. I'm like, all right, ma. All right. So that's coming soon. But it's a little chat. Some of the things are hard to teach on a short video because I try to keep it within about an hour, less than an hour. I don't want a tutorial to last all day long where people are like, I'm out, I got to eat dinner or whatever. So I try to keep the tutorial to under an hour. So that is what I have to keep in mind. Hey, our friend Donna. Hey, Donna. Maybe I'll show a necklace using those awesome beads I just got from you, which I love. Care and tension. You named it. Tension comes absolutely with practice. And you know what? Tension was hard for me. I would make the tightest crochet you ever seen. And the boy, it did not look good. I have to redo it all the time. And then my hands would hurt. So anyway, I don't know where that tangent went. All right, folks, I'm going to go and have some dinner. And I will see y'all next Sunday, this coming up Sunday. And we'll do something fun, a lot of fun. All right, y'all take care. Good night, we love everybody. you out there, Thank and we you. hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye-bye.